Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about wind-ups. Now you've already seen me upload on this channel a couple of videos about Insecta. Wind-ups are a very similar deck. A deck with an amazingly high ceiling if you open up the right combination of hands. But it's actually quite crap and um, isn't a deck that's meta relevant since uh, 2013, I believe. However, um, a card has been announced in the last few weeks that is very interesting for wind-ups. And that card is Wild Ocean Dragon Z Atlantis. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of people talk about this card. It seems absolutely crazy, the fact that you can use one effect monster to make it. So you could just use a spent Appalooza, access code, Sayuja to go into Z Atlantis. Uh, banish your whole board and then bring them all back, which is very good for effects that are soft once per turns and effects can be used only once while they're on the field. Well, the wind-ups are both of those things. Um, all of the wind-up monsters' effects are not once per turn. They just have the... Um, condition on them that you can only use the effect once while this card is face up on the field. Um, some of them in the case of Wind Up Rat have to be in a certain position. Z Atlantis can special summon the monsters back in any position, so he's a very good fit for this deck. Quickly going to go over the card by card and I'll explain to you what these cards do if you're not too familiar. Um, so we're going to start off with Wind Up Magician. This card was on the ban list for a very very long time. It went from 1 to 2 to 3 very very slowly. Um, if the effect of a wind-up monster is activated, except wind-up magician, you can special summon one level 4 or lower wind-up monster from your deck in face-up defense position. Then it has the clause that the effect can only be used once while this card is face-up on the field. This card is very, very good. Um, it's obviously a special summon from the deck. It doesn't uh, prohibit itself from special summoning another copy of itself. So you can use wind-up magician to special summon a wind-up magician, and then use another wind-up effect to special summon another wind-up magician, and then use another effect to special summon something else, like a shark or a rat. Uh, Shark is probably the second best card in the deck. It's uh, when a one-up monster is normal or special summons your side of the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. This is an effect that activates, so this does trigger wind-up magician. So you can normal summon wind-up magician, use the effect of Shark to special summon itself, use the wind-up magician to special summon something else. Wind-up Shark has a second effect, where as an ignition effect on the field, it can increase its level by one until the end phase or reduce its level by one until the end phase. Of course, this is another effect that activates. So if you go from Wind Up Magician to a Wind Up Shark, uh, trigger the Wind Up Magician to summon a Wind Up Magician, you can use the Shark to increase or decrease its level to trigger the second Wind Up Magician to summon something else like a third Wind Up Magician. Next up is Wind Up Rat. Uh, during the main phase, you can target a Wind Up Monster in your graveyard. You change this card from face up attack position to face up defense position, and then you special summon that, tar that target in face up defense position. Again, only used once while it's face up on the field, but is not a hard one spur turn. This is very good for special summoning things back and also triggering up your wind-up magician. I'm playing one bat and one hunter. We don't really go through these in the combo I'm going to show you. However, hunter is a very good card for looping cards at your opponent's hand. You can tribute a face-up wind-up monster except himself, and then you can send one random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard. This card, I believe, is banned in the OCG, and they have Zemmaity, which we don't. And hopefully we get it back soon, because I'd really like to play wind-ups in a way where you don't have to open up exactly wind-up magician or shark. Uh, wind-up bat has the effect where you change itself from attack to defense to target a wind-up monster in your graveyard and add it back to the hand. It's useful, I guess. It's a level one, so you can use it with like stuff like Link Rebo. I just want some extra RAM names in the deck in case I open up more uh, wind-up cards that I want to when we're comparing, because very often you want to special summon out, out the deck with wind-up magician rather than summon from the grid with rat because you want to get as many in rotation as possible. I'm playing one carbonet on. Uh, this is a level 3 monster. Uh, we're going to send it to the graveyard of Cherubini, and essentially you can banish it to summon a vanilla level 7 or lower dragon monster from your hand or your deck. Our target is Galaxy Serpent. It is a level 2 tuner. You might remember this little uh, combination when... Um, what was the card name of the card? Miko, I think it was in the OCG. I can't remember what the TCG translation ended up being. Uh, but this was used a lot then because uh, it was very good for like summoning a mathematician, sending Carbonet on, banishing it, summoning a Galaxy Serpent, and then making a Miko. And then from there, you could just search and do like full guard dragon combo. You may remember it from there, but using it for a completely different purpose here. But it essentially does the same thing. Uh, one artifact scythe, as long as this card is legal, I'm going to include it in combos, because why wouldn't I? It's very, very strong. Uh, one jet synchron, this is our target for Hulk. Uh, if you can get to Hulk, you can do the dagger lock, so we play jet synchron. Uh, I'm then playing a load of hand traps, so I'm playing free Ash, free Veiler, free Droll, free DD Crow. The wind-up engine is very small, so I needed something to pad the deck out. I padded it out with hand traps, so 
yeah we're also playing the one token collector um and we are playing this primarily as our small world bridge so token collector is <clears throat> probably the best small world bridge for this build um it has zero attack so you can tutor in it from almost all the hand traps other than dd crow so you can go from ash to token collector and because it is a level four monster you can go to either wind up magician or wind up shark it's also an earth so you can go to wind up rap um so this search is pretty much the entire deck for small world as long as you have a hand trap if you have dd crow you can go from dd crow to effect failure to wind up magician it's not possible to go from dd crow to wind up shark i believe in this build but is what it is uh we're playing one card destruction three dark world dealings uh, these cards uh, tend to be viewed as quite bad because they are minus ones and they are bad. However, a lot of the times you're going to open up with like wind up rat and no shark or anything. So it can be very useful just to card destruction your hand away or dark world dealings, draw a card, mill a card. Just your wind up rat is live and you can actually start to do some form of a combo. Playing three pots, pots of prosperity. Uh, we can't banish for six in this deck because the extra deck is too important, but we can banish for three. And it is oh so important to be able to get to wind up magician and shark if you want to do our full combo. I'm then playing one upstart to make the deck as consistent as possible and one wind up factory. You don't have to play this, but it is searchable and it is a search card, even if it is a little bit slow, uh, a little bit slow. For the extra deck, we are playing one Link Karibo, one Wind Up Zen Maintenance. If you don't know what this card does, it has two effects. It is one of the most push Link 2 monsters of all time, but unfortunately it's in Wind Ups for no Zen Matey, so it's quite bad. Uh, actually, it has three effects. If this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target a Wind Up XE monster you control, attach this card to it as material. That almost never comes up. Uh, the second effect is if this card is Link Summoned, uh, you can add one Wind Up card from your deck to your hand. So this is how we add Factory. And you can also banish one face-up wind-up monster you control, face down, and then special summon one monster from your deck with the same name that card had on the field. Uh, this is very good for banishing a rat that is summoned off of Magician, since Magician summons in defense mode, so you can banish the rat and you can summon the rat in attack mode, so you actually have a rat that is live. Uh, continuing on with the Link 2s, we have one Halka Firebrax, obvious reasons. We have one Cherubini, this sends our Carbonet on. One IP Masquerainer, we needed a generic two, and this one is quite good if you don't aren't able to full combo but are able to get to it to go into Unicorn. And of course, we're playing Dagda to set our scythe. Aforementioned Unicorn. And then for Link 4s, we're playing one Appalooza, one World Ocean Dragon Z Atlantis, which is an absolute push card and is fantastic in this deck. One Access Code Talker if we're going second. For Synchros, we're playing one Herald of the Arclight, one TG, one a Magician, and one Baron de Fleur. We go through all of these in our combo, and then we're playing one Bahamut Shark and one Toad, while the time of recording is £700. Uh, we're going to get straight into the combo now. So the combo is going to be one Magician, one Shark, and one card that you could discard. Can be anything, literally can be anything. So we're going to start off by normal summoning our Wind Up Magician and triggering the effect of our Wind Up Shark. This is going to allow it to special summon itself, which of course is going to trigger our Wind Up Magician to special summon a Wind Up Magician from the deck. We can then use the second effect of Shark to lower its level. This triggers the second uh, Wind Up Magician to use its effect to special summon out the third copy of Wind Up Magician. We can then use our two spent copies of Wind Up Magician to go into Wind Up Zemaity. This is going to allow us to trigger the effect to search for a Wind Up Factory, and also trigger the effect of Wind Up Magician to special summon another monster from the deck. Here we're going to summon a Rat. We're then going to activate our Wind Up Factory and then use the effect as their maintenance to banish the rat face down to special summon a new copy in attack mode so its effect is live. This will trigger our Wind Up Factory, which is going to allow us to search a Wind Up Shark. We're then going to use our effect, oh no, sorry, we're going to use our Magician's and Maintenance to go into a copy of Dagda just to make some room on the board. We're then going to use Rat and Dagda in sequence, setting the scythe and then bringing back our copy of Magician from the graveyard. Because a wind-up monster was special summoned, we can now use wind-up shark to special summon itself, which is going to trigger our magician to special summon another copy of rat from the deck. We can now use our rat and our shark to go into a cherubini since the shark lowered its level to a three. We then use cherubini's effect to send a carbonet on. At this point, we know if our opponent hasn't nibbed us. If they do nib us, we can um, still end on the Hulk Dagda side of things. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. So we now going to link our Dagda and our Cherubini off for a World Dragon Ocean Z Atlantis, or whatever that card's called. Banishing everything and then special summoning everything back. Since we were able to special summon everything back, the soft ones for turns are now back into effect. So we're going to use the effect of Shark to lower its level. 
This is going to trigger the uh, magician on the field to activate its effect to special summon another copy of Shark. We can now link off the spent Shark and the spent Magician for a copy of IP Masquerade Reino. At this point, we're just trying to make room and we want to go into a link to. We can now use the effect of Rat to change itself from attack to defense to special summon a copy of Shark from the graveyard and overlay both of these level 4 wind up Sharks for a Bahamut Shark. From here, we can use the effect of Bahamut Shark to special summon out a Toad. This is the first time we have a negate on board, so Nibiru was live up until this point. If our opponent had used Nibiru on us before we got to this point, we would be able to banish our copy of Carbon Add-on to summon a Galaxy Serpent from our deck, use the Nib token and the Galaxy Serpent to go into Hulk of Fibrax, summon a Jet Synchron, make a Link Rebo, bring back the Jet Synchron, and go into a Dagda to be able to allow us to do the Scythe Lock in our opponent's turn and end on a Baron to Floor. So, that is the combo if you get Nibiru's at any point before you get Totally Awesome on board. From this point on on summon 742, we now have protection from Nib. Um, going forwards, we're now going to use the Carbon Elements effects to summon a Galaxy Serpent from our deck. We are then going to use the Galaxy Serpent and the Z Atlantis to go into a Hauk of Fibrax. This is going to allow us to special summon the aforementioned copy of Jet Synchron from our deck. And use it with the with the rat we've already used to go into a copy of Herald of the Arclight. We are then going to use the effect in Graveyard of our Jet Synchron to special summon out the Jet Synchron, and then banish it as well as sending to the Grave IP and Bahamut Shark to go into a copy of Appaloosa. So here's our end board in our turn. It's a copy of Herald, which is protecting us from Droplet because they can't send to Graveyard as cost. Uh, we have Appaloosa, which has three negates. We have Halka Fibrax, which can tag out for TG1 of Edition to pop the Scythe, and we have Totally Awesome. <clears throat> so obviously, in our opponent's turn, we're going to use Halka Fibrax to summon out the aforementioned TG1 of Edition, use the effect to pop the Scythe, use the Scythe effect in Graveyard, special summon the Scythe, use the Scythe on board to lock our opponent out of the extra deck, and then quick synchro into a Baron de Floor. So this is a pretty strong combo that you can do with wind-ups if you do open up the right number of cards and our opponent doesn't open up any hand traps. Um, yeah, Z Atlantis does a lot for this deck, and I really, really hope that we get our party bow off of the ban list at some point. I feel like with the release of Gigantic Splite, which is kind of like party bow, it's an XZ monster that is generic that special summons any level 2 monster from the deck, so it's kind of like party bow. I know party bow is not once per turn, but like, if you just put it to one, like we're not really going to be shuffling it that back with Dynasty Rimble that often, are we? Um, so yeah, this is the video. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please make sure to leave a like, leave some comments, feed the algorithm for us, and we'll be back with another video soon. Thanks for watching.